Hello, okay, question three from our quadratics topic assessment and we have got here we've got, for well, some reason it's picked up the little uh, grammar collection or spelling correction from word as well, that's nice, so just ignore that so we've got a function which we just we've learnt about f of x means f of x function of x. So a function of x is this, where k is a constant means k is a number. And we've got three parts here. I'm trying to answer all parts in the video. So part A says find set of values of k for which the equation f of x equals naught has equal roots. Stop. Don't read on beyond the four marks. This piece here is information for part B and possibly part C you need. Okay. So the first thing we know for part A we know that x squared minus kx plus 9, when that's equal to 0, it has equal roots. Well, that tells us that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. It's from the equal roots part. And if we write down our a, our b, and our c, we know that a is 1, B is minus k, be careful of that, and c is 9. So to work out the discriminant, I need to do minus k squared minus 4 lots of 1 lots of 9, and that's equal to 0. And again, some of you are forgetting to write this expression equal 0. Okay? It's because it's equal roots. It's not bigger than or less than, it's exactly equal to 0. So let's expand all this out. We know that k squared minus 36 is 0, or we can just rewrite that, k squared is equal to 36. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. So k is equal to plus or minus 6. Absolutely vitally important that you take both solutions. That when you square rooting, you take the positive and negative. Now, we know this, that 6 multiplied by 6 gets back to where we started, our 36, but also minus 6 times minus 6 also gets us back to 36. So that means we've got two solutions here. So there's a four mark question here, so it's absolutely vital that you work out where um, you possibly drop mark. You had to um, you had to have both solutions for all four marks. Okay, So you had to have the correct statement here and you had to have all four solutions. Okay, so let's flip on to the next uh, page. Let's just get rid of that. Let's look at part B now. It says that given that k equals 4, express f of x in the form blah, where p, r, q are constants to be found. So if we look at part B, we now know that x squared minus 4x plus 9 is equal to 0. Okay, but we don't really need e equals to zero because it's not asking us to solve it just yet. And also, you notice that the equal roots now doesn't apply because it's not for the only way it had equal roots was when k was plus or minus six. In this case, k is um, uh, k is oh yeah, k is. Uh, Four. Sorry, I just checking that I had my positive and negative sign right here. Um, k is four, um, so it doesn't have equal roots. So, but we don't. Again, we don't mind about that because we're not asked to solve the equation. We're just asked to express it in this form. So, completing the square. Now that should be quite straightforward. You have your square completed a bit, and then you have your bit on the end. Well, I know the only way to get that is using this. However. If I expand that out, that gives me x squared minus 4x, and then it gives me plus 4. So in order to get this bit, I actually get that bit and that bit, and I get a bonus plus 4, which I don't want. So I have to subtract the 4, and then I know this expression here gives me that, except can't forget my plus 9. 
So when I compile all that together, I get x minus 2 all squared plus 5. And now if you don't trust me, you can expand that out. You can sort all this out, and then I shall promise you that when you sort this out, then you will get exactly what you're supposed to do at the very top. Um, and it says where p and q constants to be found. So you notice it says minus p here, so we know that p must just be normal too. Um, because we've already got the subtracted in the expression up here, and q must be 5. Three marks for this, you get one mark for getting the two right, and then you get the, or getting the minus two in the brackets here, it can be written in either place, and then you get the two marks to make, uh, you get the second and the third mark, I should say, for sorting these numbers out properly and ending up with five. Part C. Well, it says write down the minimum value of f of x and the value of x which this occurs. So we just rewrote it as x minus 2 all squared plus 5. Now, I want this to be the smallest possible value overall. And it comes in two bits. It comes in that bit and that bit. Now, I can only change part 1, because I can only change the values of x, the plus 5 is always going to be plus 5, and the minus 2 before I square it is always going to be like that, so the only value I can change is x. And for all values of x, values of x, I know that x minus 2 squared is going to be bigger than 0. So for no matter what value of x I put in here, when I take 2 off on it, whether it's positive or negative or zero, when I square it, I'm usually going to get a number that's bigger than or equal to zero. So if I put a positive number in, take away two and square it, uh, or if I put a negative number in, or whatever value I put in here, whenever I square it, it's always going to end up positive, or it could end up zero. And then once I've calculated that, I'm going to add on five. Now, it says write down the million value of that fact. So I want the bigger, the smallest answer overall. So the smallest answer I can get overall is when this bit here, this first red bit, is when that's zero. If I can make this thing zero, because it can't get any smaller than zero, it never gets smaller than zero. To get the smallest overall answer, I want to make this first bit zero. And the only way to make the first bit zero before I add on five is when x is two. And then this bracket goes to zero, and that means my f of x overall, this bit zero plus my five gets my 5. Okay? Or you can express it express it express it as a coordinate when my x value is 2, my f of x value, which my y value is 5. Okay, the smallest value over for here is the smallest value I can get. Now I'm gonna just load up a, a program here and um, so just I'm gonna pause it and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Although uh, for you it's been like I've not been gone at all, but for me I've actually spent a long time. My computer's crashed a couple of times. In fact, it's been several days and I've just been sat at my desk for. I'm actually really, really hungry and thirsty right now. Anyway, so we're where were we? We were just uh, found out the minimum point, didn't we? We found out the value of x for which the value of y or the function of x value comes out to 5. Now I should have plotted this. I've used in Desmos, one of my favourite um, websites of all time. You can see uh, here, you can go there yourself and use it. It's called Free Beautiful Math. It's great. Anyway, here's my graph here. So, you can see the point here, the minimum point on the curve. Let's zoom out slightly. You can see that that is the minimum point, smallest point on the curve. You can see it never goes below that. And we can see that here, if we change this, if we call this uh, B, let me put a little slider in, and you see that we got that to 5 over there before, oops, okay, that's the minimum point. And as B gets bigger, do, 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 whatever value B takes, that's the Y value, because we are at the X value of 2, which means this bit's disappearing, and then the y value is up. If we change this value here 
if we kept this at 5, let's turn that back to 5, and then let's change this to A. Oh, we have to just put an A in here. Typical A, and then let's get rid of this. Add our slider in. You can see that we had uh, X take away 2 before here, and you can see it's there. And this time, you can see that actually what happens by moving this as A gets, we're taking away a bigger number, actually moves to the right, and actually moves to the left. And you have to be very careful here because we've got to subtract A in here. So if you take away a bigger value of A, we actually, the minimum point goes further to the right, the left, depending on what, but only when it's a minus in there. Okay? And we started with that. So that's how it explains it, that's how minimums work. Okay? Let's have a quick look back at here. For our one, for our graph f of x, I called it y so I could plot it as the minimum point is when x was 2, and you notice how that says minus there, but actually the x coordinate was positive, and the y coordinate stayed as positive here.